Now, what does this say about God? Number one, God prepared Mary. And we already saw that, how God spoke to uh, Mary through the angel Gabriel. God prepared. And then the Holy Spirit coming upon, the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon uh, Mary. Right? God prepared Mary. Number two, God prepared Joseph. He has to prepare Joseph. Now, you remember Joseph was actually thinking, now this is not possible, huh? Maybe I will divorce her quietly. But the angel came and spoke in the dream. And it's very interesting. How do you know it's the angel spoke? Because the angel addressed Joseph and said, Joseph, son of David. If the angel just came and spoke, you don't know. But when the angel calls your name, <laughs> one of the things is when God begins to speak to you, he knows you by name. He knows you by name. When God calls Samuel, he said, Samuel, Samuel. No, it's amazing that, you, that God knows you by name, by the way. God knows you by name. And so, he calls him Joseph, son of David. And he spoke very specifically. Because Mary had already spoken to Joseph. And he spoke very specifically. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. For the child that she is bearing is from the Holy Spirit. Wow. He prepared Joseph. He prepared Joseph. And then he prepared the nation of the Jews. All right. So you see the preparation of Mary in Luke's gospel. You see the preparation of Joseph in Matthew's gospel. But the preparation of the Jews, you know, in, in, in John chapter 4, Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman and he said, salvation is from the Jews. Wow. Salvation is from the Jews. So you have to read the whole, entire Old Testament that God was preparing the, the nation of, of Israel to bring forth a savior to the world. Wow. And I just give you one example of it. Because in their sacrifices, they have to sacrifice the lamb, the perfect lamb, the, uh, without blemish. And yet, when Jesus was born, and he, when he was starting off his ministry, there, uh, John the Baptist looks at Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God, who will take the sin of the world. Only the Jews will understand that. <laughs> because within their worldview, they understand what the Lamb of God is. And now they know that it was a person. So he prepared the nation of the, of the Jews, Israel. And finally, he sent Jesus. That brings us to that question, who is Jesus? What does it say about Jesus? Now, it's very interesting if you follow through this. In verse 18, he says he's the Messiah. Now, what is a Messiah? Messiah... If you read the Bible, is the one, he is the anointed one. He is, why is he anointed? Now, uh, the ones who are anointed are usually kings and prophets and priests. But the, usually the anointing, when you anoint somebody, it's usually the kings. Right? Yeah, priests are anointed too. Prophets are anointed too. But here the word Messiah also means he'll be a ruler. This is why we said, uh, here is born the Messiah, the Lord. Christ the Lord. Another name for Christ is, is, is Messiah. So, here he, he, here he talks about being a ruler. He talks about being a king. And then in verse 21, he speaks about a savior. Now, not everyone would say he's a savior. But he comes as a savior. Now, it's important for us to know that he is our savior. Only the person of Jesus Christ will save you. Only the person of Jesus Christ. It is not how good you are. <laughs> Interestingly. By the way, if, since I'm there, you might ask, Dorai, why did God choose Mary? Why not choose somebody else? You know? Why? I mean, I, in, in, in my family, when I sat and talked to them, why did God choose Mary? Why not choose Lechumi? <laughs> you know? Uh, why choose Joseph? Why not choose Mutu? Now, I just want to give you an idea why God chooses certain people. It is his prerogative. He, only he knows. Only he knows. It's just by the grace of God he chooses. But there is one thing that I see. The people whom he chooses, they obey. <laughs> they obey. Could you imagine Mary? He speaks to Mary 
the angel of the Lord speaks to Mary and he said, your servant, may it be done according to your word. Wow. She didn't say, no, 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 not me. Choose somebody else. No. She was obedient. Now, one of the things I want to say is this. Well, it's a, certainly even obedience is by the grace of God. But as you obey and obey, God pours his grace over and over and over and over as we obey. Same thing with Joseph. When the angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph, he obeyed. All right? Now, the nation of Israel, <laughs> yes, there were people who did not obey, but that God knew there was a small group of people, a remnant, they call it, that obeyed God and brought the purposes of God to pass, and the promises of God to pass. So if you say how God prepared them, he prepares those who are obedient. All right, those who are obedient. All right, so come back, coming back to Jesus. Jesus, he's a Messiah. Number two, he is a savior. He is a savior. And number three, he is God himself. Now this is amazing. He is God himself. So what does it mean, Jesus, when he was born, as a man, in verse, 20, uh, verse 25, he says, then he was born. Only a man can be born. And, right, so how did he become man? They said Jesus Christ was fully man, fully God, meaning he had two natures. But he lived in such a way that on earth, it is as if God's nature was subject to God the Father, as it were. You know, of course, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, the lame walked, the blind, uh, the eyes were open. Uh, he did miracles. But by, la by, by, uh, by large, he was, he was a person. He was a man. He was a man. Now, I'm standing here. I have two natures too. I am maybe, a, maybe I'm a pastor, uh, but I'm also a father. I'm also a father. <laughs> Two natures too. All right. So we have. So it is possible for us to have that. Okay. So Jesus was fully man, fully God. But on earth, Jesus. So whenever the Bible, when you read Jesus of Nazareth, it's about man, and that is why in Acts ten thirty eight it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Again, it is the Holy Spirit. Now, you want to move on with God, you need to take on the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it on your own. It is only with the Holy Spirit we can say all things are possible with God. And Jesus himself was anointed with the Holy Spirit. So he was man, but full of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Full of the Holy Spirit. So, he... We can say he's the Messiah, he's the Savior, he's God, he's man. And I want to say what C.S. Lewis said. He calls it the grand miracle. I call it here extraordinary, but he called it the grand miracle. And this is what I want you to take hold of this morning as you, when the service is over, when you go home, it is this. The birth of Christ is the grand miracle of all time. God stepped into space-time and became man and dwell among us. Think for a while that God became man like you and me. Wow. That is the miracle. That is the wonder. That is the story of Christmas. Christmas is the story of God stepping on earth as man. Wow. We have a great story. The wonder of Christmas is the wonder of God becoming man in the person of Jesus Christ. You know, God stepped on earth as man in the person of Jesus Christ. 